quite unscrupulously, if understandably, sex education is seldom explicitly promoted to the general public as a measure for population control. More commonly, it is concealed behind lofty-sounding phrases such as, quote, total physical, mental, and social well-being, end quote, or, quote, a spiral of learning experience to establish sexuality as an entity within healthy interpersonal relationships, end quote, or even as a way to create the ideal human beings of the future. Quote, not furtive, exploitive, leering, guilt-ridden, apathetic, compulsive, joyless, not like ourselves, end quote, but, quote, eager, passionate, caring, unafraid, open, responsible, exultant, end quote. Since the mid-1980s in the United States, the blame on sexual ignorance for the supposedly high rates of adolescent pregnancy has made good copy for the sale of the new sex programs. The promotional pitch was thought to have such wide public appeal that the Alan Guttmacher Institute, the research arm of Planned Parenthood, published two widely disseminated booklets on the so-called teenage pregnancy epidemic and launched a media blitz based on the slogan, quote, One million teenagers are getting pregnant, end quote. Statistical studies showed not only that virtually all teenagers coming for pregnancy counseling were already familiar with contraception, but that adolescent pregnancy actually increased when the new sex programs were introduced, and mostly in the areas receiving the most lavish expenditures. Nevertheless, the sex education programs were often running throughout the nation as the 1970s turned into the 1980s. More recently, the AIDS outbreak has served to justify sex education, again, without factual support. But the failure of the avowed purposes notwithstanding, the carefully designed programs continued relentlessly toward the real demographic goal. By an unremitting insistence on values clarification, they strove to inculcate effective learning, parenthetically as opposed to cognitive learning, unparenthetical, a method that was essential to their success. The desirability of small families, for both individual and social reasons, was constantly stressed. A typical curriculum guide asked children to discuss, quote, the problems that would be eliminated if I were the only child, end quote, and to analyze hostilities between brothers and sisters and family conflicts. The guide asked children to decide whether they were parent material and offered a list of reasons for having children, among them, quote, to prove your femininity or masculinity, parenthetically, I can do it, exclamation point, end parenthetical, end quote. To make up for your own unhappy childhood, to get back at your parents and other motives, I'll suggesting that persons who want children must, at the least, be socially inadequate and, more probably, psychologically deranged. The language was not unique. It appeared in a number of local guides though ostensibly prepared locally and financed under separate state and federal grants, the local curriculum guides duplicated large parts of each other's contents with entire sections photocopied from a common source. The programs concentrated on how difficult it is to raise children and how unattractive they really are. Quote, babies are not sweet little things. They wet and dirty themselves. They get sick. They're very expensive to take care of, end quote, advised one Planned Parenthood pamphlet. And in the same vein, other guides warned that, quote, it is estimated that it takes $70,000 to $100,000, parenthetically, not including mother's loss of income, and parenthetical, to raise a child these days, end quote, and that, quote, babies need attention and care 24 hours a day, end quote, and often spoil marriages by making their fathers jealous and their mothers depleted. Babies are loud, smelly, and expensive. Unless you want one, said a Planned Parenthood newspaper advertisement. The values clarification strategies used so extensively in modern sex classes carried out the themes. 
The following exercise appears in Sidney Simon's widely used Meeting Yourself Halfway, 31 Values Clarification Strategies for Daily Living. The population problem is very serious and involves every country on this planet. What steps would you encourage to help resolve the problem? Volunteer to organize birth control information centers throughout the country. Join a pro-abortion lobbying group. Encourage the limitation of two children per family and have the parents sterilized to prevent future births. The programs provided for classroom visits, lectures, and distribution of literature by antinatalist groups, Planned Parenthood, Zero Population Growth, and the National Alliance for Optional Parenthood, formerly known as the National Organization of Non-Parents. The sex programs instructed children in all methods of blocking fertility, contraception, sterilization, and abortion. They made children learn the telephone numbers of birth control and abortion clinics and the bus routes to them. They taught children that all services to arrest fertility are freely available on a confidential basis, i.e., no one will tell their parents, and enlightened them on how to become legally emancipated from their parents. Children were required to choose among the various options in the event of an unplanned pregnancy to decide whether it is better to have an abortion or to give birth to an unwanted child. They took care of one of these options by teaching Sal Gordon's commandment, quote, No one has the right to bring an unwanted child into the world, end quote. Children age 12 took field trips to drugstores where they checked out the availability of contraceptive products and went through a birth control clinic from beginning to end, filling out a patient's form. On these trips, they might be invited to participate in a group examination of each other's genital organs in order to demonstrate the insertion of a diaphragm. Parents and students protested when a pediatrician performed a genital examination on 6th grade girls in Pennsylvania's East Stroudsburg Area School District in 1996. The school programs also expounded on other aspects of the population control agenda. They discussed, in considerable depth, genetic screening and the selective abortion of babies suspected of having Down syndrome or the like. Though euthanasia was not as yet directly espoused, the California program drew the students' attention to the aging process by presenting this tableau for discussion. Quote, Sometimes grandfather is fine, at other times he takes off his clothes, defecates on the floor. What are you going to do with grandfather? End quote. The sex educators insinuated themselves into the lives of children at early ages, no later than kindergarten and, if possible, at the age of three, either through day nurseries or their own parents, parenthetically, properly trained, of course, in modern parenting classes and parenthetical. The goal of these early efforts was to accustom children to open and explicit discussions of sex and to bend their attitudes regarding family life sex for pleasure rather than for procreation, and their gender identity. Starting with a bathroom tour for a mixed group in kindergarten or nursery school, the process of desensitization began by naming and explaining the male and female genital parts and sexual intercourse. The process continued through childhood and adolescence. By the time children were in the seventh grade, they had mastered ovulation, intercourse, fertilization, anatomy, parenthetically including ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, hymen, labia, clitoris, scrotum, penis, testes, prostate, cowper's glands, and parenthetical, erection, ejaculation, orgasm, genetics, embryonic development, the stages of birth, breastfeeding, bottle feeding, and birth control. In case the sheer intensity of the program seems startling, remember that sex educators regard the sexual self as the total self. As the SIECUS, New York University Principles Basic to Education for Sexuality, put it, 
The psychist concept of sexuality refers to the totality of being a person. As a function of the total personality, it is concerned with the biological, psychological, sociological, spiritual, and cultural variables of life which by their effects on personality development and interpersonal relations can in turn affect social structure. Pick the very best one and you